and welcome to she shades with jill yeah you guessed it i'm jill i am so excited today and as if you can't tell by the title of uh the video i am going to be reviewing ta-da the phoenix artisan accoutrement and this is a long one twist adjustable double open comb ascension razor yeah, that's a long one. So anyway, um, a little over a week ago, I approached uh, Doug and Fran over at uh, PAA, and uh, I said, you know what? You really need to send me that Ascension razor so I can review it. And I listed a few reasons why, and long story short, they said, okay. So I was so excited to be able to partake in this pass around of this new razor of theirs. Now, uh, as far as a point of reference, for uh, open comb razors uh, in my den, I have two, and one of them is the Razor Rock SLOC self lubricating open comb. It is a double open comb, and it's very similar to Doug's uh, DOC over at PAA. And both of those razors are very mild razors, very mild, very mild, very mild razors. And the other one that I have as a point of reference is my Bakelite. This is a very light plastic, if you're not familiar with Bakelite, very, very light razor. But this one, it's not a double open comb, but it's an open comb, but it is a slant. And I'm telling you, this thing is very aggressive. If you have any doubts about how aggressive this little razor is, just go over to Paul H. Films about two years ago when he used it for the first time it wasn't pretty there was a lot of bloodletting so um let me tell you a little bit about the uh ascension razor it's made of 70 75 aluminum which is very sturdy very strong they use it in airplanes and they even use it uh for parts in an m16 now this is the handle and that's the bomb handle because this resembles a bomb. Mm -hmm. Now, Doug, he refers to it as the pinky throttle because you can use this to easily maneuver around. Pinky throttle? Doug, you've been spending way too much time with Matt. Then we have the top cap. We have the base plate which is the uh, storm gray anodized no, the whole razor is anodized that's the uh the base and it has the phoenix marking and the doc and you'll notice it has these two little slots plus for the center pin and it matches up perfectly with this top plate look at those look at that rake on that thing it lines up perfectly with that and the tolerances on this are great. There's no movement in that at all. And you can see that the two combs line up perfectly on that. And I will tell you, ooh, well, I'm in the middle of a storm, so I might lose my power. That would be awful. I'd have to start this all over again. Ooh, listen to that thunder. Um, now, I will tell you, the um, last seven days that I've been using this, this is what uh, I ran the razor through to test it. I used a plethora of different uh, blades in it. I used an Astra Green. I used a Gillette Silver Blue. I used a Derby Extra. I used a Supermax uh, Blue Diamond. I used a Shark, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I also used... Uh, a lot of different soaps. I chose to use some of my worst performers, some that had very little protection or glide or residual slickness, and then the middle of the road type of soaps. 
and then all the way up to and including my best performing soaps that I have. And um, then I also went through a lot of the settings on the blade, uh, on the razor rather. Now, what do, you, what do I mean by the settings? Well, this is truly an adjustable razor, but not in what you would think of like a Gillette adjustable razor. Let me put a blade in here because I will be comparing this on a head-on-head -head with the Bakelite. I'm going to load this with an Astro Green, both of the razors. I'm going to load uh, a brand new Astro Green in. So let's lay that blade there with the Astro Green. Oh, shit. Power went out. Oh, my Lord. Did you see that? So that's all lined up now. Now there is a lot of spring tension. Look at that. Without uh, putting the handle on, there's a lot of spring tension on that. Can you see that movement when I push it down as if putting the handle on? And that is what allows the adjustments to the razor. So let me get that handle on there. And okay, now do not tighten it down really tough. You shouldn't tighten any razor down a lot. You shouldn't do that. Wow. Um, so just tighten it down to to there. Now when it's tightened down to that, that is the least aggressive setting on the razor. Now, if you take the razor, I'm going to put as a point of reference my finger on the top here, you can turn this as much as a whole quarter turn, and that would be the most aggressive. And then you can do it an eighth of a turn. So that would be between the, the milder setting and the more aggressive. And you could do anything in between that whole thing. You can even go beyond the one quarter turn. I did not do that. I only went as far as the one quarter turn. So what that does is it changes the blade gap and the exposure of the blade. Here it is tightened all the way. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. And then I turn it a little bit, and you can see how that blade changes. Turn it a little bit more, and you can see how it changes there, I hope. So that is the adjustable portion of it. Now, I have a lot of real estate to cover when I do my shaves because I not only do what I call my baby girl face shave, I also shave both my arms and pits and both my legs and my bikini line. Not that I wore a bikini, but if I did wear a bikini, you know what I'm talking about. So I put the razor through every setting possible. And I was able to do quite a few settings in one shave because of all the different areas that I could shave with. So I went with strictly the mildest setting, strictly the most aggressive setting, uh, the in-between settings, just every every possibility, and then changing it from uh, pass to pass, from maybe uh, aggressive to in-between and mild. So you get the idea. So I ran it through all the settings possible on the razor. And I'm telling you, every single shave, and I shaved every day, now, granted, I didn't have a whole bunch of growth like men might have, but every single shave was a BBS shave, and I had no irritation. The only area of trouble I had, and this is uh, par for the course for a double comb uh, razor, is uh, bony areas like my shin, uh, like the outside tendons of my leg by the kneecap and also the kneecap. Now, luckily, I didn't nick uh, my Achilles tendon, which can be troublesome, or my uh, ankle or anything like that. Mostly uh, using this razor, putting it through its rigors, 
uh, was my shin and my in my knee area, but there was no uh, need for uh, you know a uh, styptic pencil or anything like that. Just tiny little uh, nicks on it. So it just performed wonderfully, wonderfully. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a oh, razor versus razor. I uh, prepped my face a little earlier, but I'm going to re-prep it. Bear with me one second. I've got some hot water here. And uh, if you've seen my other videos, you know what I do for prep. I take a very hot uh, wash rag and I hold it to my face until it gets cold. <laughs> and I'll shorten this up for the sake of the video, but I'll do that a couple times. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to use uh, Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements Cube. And this is the regular one, not the mentholated or the banana. And I'm going to use that as a pre-shave. Now, if you've watched my other videos, or if you haven't watched them, I'll explain again. I don't do three-pass shaves because, let's face it, I don't have a lot of facial hair. Some women do, but I concentrate on this area, this area, the, uh, the peach fuzzies here, here, and the peach fuzzies here, and along here, and along here, and along here, and here, 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 here. But I do have, uh, because of hormon ugh, hormonal changes as I age, some dark coarse hairs here uh, in this area here on my chin here and along my jawline. Now this is going to be a challenge because I'm sure you notice that I have these two things here. I was out, uh, you can hear the storm that we have. We've been having a lot of storms in Florida and I was out cleaning up palm fronds. I have nine palm trees in my backyard and uh, I almost tripped and one nailed me and they're very, very sharp. <laughs> ends on the palm fronds. So I have those two spots. So this is going to be tricky to see if I splay that open. I am going to use the Bakelite on that side. Okay, so let me rinse my hands off so I have... Okay, let's load the Bakelite now with the same blade, like I said, an Astra. Come on. Okay, with an Astra, and that goes in there like that. Now, this is not a true slant. This is a uh, what they call a torqued slant. You put that in there, and when you oop, let's get the base plate. That would help. You put the base plate on, and you can see there's a gap there. But when I put the handle on. It's going to torque this down and twist it. And you might hear the snap when it finally locks down. No, it didn't do it that time. So you can see that that is some nasty blade exposure. <laughs> I mean, we're talking nasty blade exposure. Very aggressive, like I said. Now, there is a little overhang here, whereas the Ascension has no overhang on it so let's get to it Alrighty, take two. Oh my god this storm is something else and on top of that my memory was full so this is gonna be take two all right so again what soap am I using tonight I am going to be using Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements Deja Fougere I love Fougere scents this is a green woodsy scent and I had uh, already put the um, uh, bloom water on after I did my uh, cube pre-shave. So let's lather, let's get some lather on my face. Let me get my brush wet again and re-lather and hope that this video takes. 
so oh I need oops I need some more water here it's very pasty that's what I did too when I was testing uh, uh, the razor and the different soaps sometimes I would use a pastier one sometimes I would use um, a thinner lather so like I said I ran it through the gamut Soap down. I'm not going to need that anymore. A little bit more water. This is going to be a rather thick lather. Let's clear the snot track and the lips so I don't eat too much of the soap, although it does. Tastes pretty good. So again, we're going to use the Bakelite on my left side. And I'm going to start with a, with the grain. Now this, as scary as it is, let's do the little fuzzies up there. Along those cuts, need more water. Sorry about the running water. Can I add more? And get the fuzzies here. I'm surprised this didn't start bleeding. I was scared to death to use this razor. I bought it and it sat there and mocked me. For a month before I finally used it. That's nice. And the troublesome area here. Nice. It's aggressive, but smooth. You just have to respect this razor. Very light touch. Nice. Oh my God. That's like almost baby butt. Okay, now let's move over to the other side with this. Let's see, I'm gonna start I'm going to start with a mid-aggressive, so I'm going to go, I'm going to put my thumb there and go about an eighth of a turn. And let's do the same pass with the ascension. Light touch on this also. Because of the fact that it's a light razor, People have a tendency to press harder and they think they have to overcompensate. Let's see, it didn't quite. That's better. All right, that is very smooth also. So even on uh, a mid-aggressive, the Ascension did a great job also. It really did. You know, I could call this shave done. I really could, but I'm gonna push my luck. Let me rinse this off, I'll be right back. And I'll just do some, um, like, I, I won't do this stuff. I'll, I'll do a little bit here, a little bit here, and then those areas again. So let me uh, relather. I'm telling you, both of these razors are so efficient, but 
they feel comfortable. Let's go with the most aggressive on the Ascension this time so that I can compare it to the Bakelite, which is already in and of itself aggressive. So let's do that. This time I'll start with the Ascension on my right side. And I will do an against the grain. That is great. There's very little touch up to do just on this trouble area. Oh, I love it. You know what? I'm loving this ascension so much on this. that I am going to finish the rest of the shave with the Ascension. So. Oh, and the one thing I did, I, I was concerned about when I was first using this, let's tighten it, you know, to the least aggressive. Um, what I was afraid of when I changed it to any other setting is that it would move or something. But after every pass that I did, I would double check it. So if I had it on a quarter turn and I got done with that pass, I would turn it to see if indeed it stayed where it was. And it did. So that's another great thing about it that I was really concerned about. It's staying there on the setting. So let's do an against the grain here. And let's go up here and do the fuzzies and the jawline. And let's have a feel around. It did a great job and it did not cut open this. So it is an efficient razor, but it is smooth. So I'm telling you, the advantage is this has more adjustability to it. So I'm going to call that a day. It was a great shave. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you will and hit that little dingy dongy so that you're notified when I have my next video. And again, thanks to Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements for the opportunity to review this wonderful Ascension Razor. Thanks and goodbye.